and the meeting's live. Okay, thank you for joining us tonight. This is the Williamsport City Council meeting of Thursday, May 14th, 2020, a little bit past 6.30 p.m. And again, we're <clears throat> meeting remotely um, on Zoom tonight in Williamsport. Uh, we'll begin the agenda with uh, item number one, approval of city council minutes dated April 30th, 2020. Is there a motion and a second? So moved. Move. Motion second. and a second. Any questions or corrections on those minutes? Were you raising your hand, Liz? Okay, I don't think there's any questions. Uh, Mrs. Frank on the motion, please. Mr. Yoda. Yes. Mr. Mack. Mr. Polizzi. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mrs. Ben. Yes. Mr. Beck. Ms. Mealy. Mr. Alice. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Uh, item two, limited courtesy of the floor. We've had no requests tonight, I do not believe. Um, we'll move to item number three, appointments. Uh, starting with uh, Veterans Park, uh, Veterans Memorial Park, Dan Markley of uh, 714 First Avenue. Um, would you like to? Uh, handle this mayor slaughter sure uh before you uh well good evening president allison and Vice good president evening Kelly and the rest of council administration uh before you is um dan markley um for the veterans memorial park for your review uh dan was an employee of the city john of course markley does a phenomenal job and we would love to have dan join him as part of this uh, commission as well. Thank you, Mayor Slaughter. Uh, both of these appointments tonight were reviewed in Finance Committee, I believe. So, Ms. Mealy, would you care to address this or any other members of Finance? Sure, I can address this, Randy. Um, and so, can other members of Finance? Uh, we've, we um, obviously, Finance does not vote on any of these items, but we did interview um, Mr. Markley, Dan Markley, that is. Um, and I think he was actually uh, on the phone with us um, and his brother, John. <laughs> but uh, as, as we all know, John has um, really put in kind of a yeoman's effort on the, um, on the uh, Veterans Memorial Park Commission so far. And uh, and, and Dan seemed to be well aware, uh, given his time in the Streets and Parks Department, of, um, of what sort of a commitment he was taking on and, and exactly what was in the works up there at, um, at the park and, uh, and seemed excited to, uh, to be involved. Um, and, uh, you know, I think um, we, we, we all felt that, that we were fortunate that, that he was willing to continue to invest his time in the city upon retirement. And, uh, and um, certainly that if John could talk him into it, then we probably shouldn't stand in the way. So um, I will defer to other members of the committee for further comment. Any other comments? Lonnie Katz? Council. We are thrilled that Dan is gonna be working with John again. We know that the two of them have worked together for years. I guess we can't separate them. Um, and uh, I think what they're doing right now is really worthwhile. Uh, I would like people to go up and see exactly how much work has been put into Veterans Memorial Park. It's absolutely incredible. And also to remember that they are still selling bricks to be put up in that park. Um, and if you need any information, get in touch, uh, go on the website and see um, how you can uh, obtain a brick. Um, but the next big project that they're doing is they're bringing the airplane. Um, Vince, I think you know the, the number of the airplane, okay, what it is, um, from uh, the airport that will be traveling down the Beltway 
on making its way down to Veterans Park, but it's uh, something that uh, everybody's going to love to see. And I think just the process of bringing this plane into Veterans Park is gonna be incredible. And uh, as soon as the virus is over uh, and they're able to do this, they're gonna be pushing forward with it. And John said he would get in touch with us to let us know. But Vince, I think if you could say what the airplane is, cause I really don't remember what it was. Anyone can jump in and correct me if I'm mistaken, but I believe it is a retired A6 intruder. Sounds right. Other comments from council members? Um, is there a motion and a second on this appointment? So um, moved. Second. Motion and a second. Um, and we've already commented, so Mrs. Frank will take the vote, please. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Mackey? Yes. Mr. Pelizzi? Yes. Mrs. Cat? Yes. Mr. B yes. Ms. Mealy? Yes. Mr. Allison? Yes, motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. And we'll move to the second appointment to the HARB board. Um, Hannah Ramsauer, 419 West 4th Street, Williamsport, uh, appointed to a five year term commencing 514.20 and ending 514.25. Uh, she'll be filling a term that has been vacant up to now. Um, this was also reviewed in finance. So, did we have another? report, please. <laughs> sure. Um, Randy, this was reviewed in finance. Um, and, and once again, I think um, that finance uh, concurred on the wisdom of Ms. Ramsauer's nom nomination to this um, position or to this to the spot on the hard board. Um, uh, I, as, as we discussed just before the meeting began, I will be abstaining on this vote since Ms. Ramsauer does actually uh, work for my business. Um, but, uh, but that said, uh, we had a nice discussion with her. She's um, not only a resident of the district, but she owns um, property in the district and she works in the district. Uh, so really we couldn't necessarily uh, be looking for someone with more invested in the, um, in the neighborhood, I suppose. Um, but I'll defer to Ms. Katz um, or Mr. Yoder to, uh, to talk a little bit more about her. Mrs. Mrs. Scott, please. Yes, I'll just uh, add on that it, it's really great to have someone uh, on the hard board. This is uh, one that we're constantly looking for volunteers to, to serve on. And to have Hannah that lives, works, and has a business in that area, she will know exactly what to look for and what to ask, what questions to ask for. So we're really thrilled that she's coming and one on board. And we also want to thank her very much. Absolutely. Mr. Banks. So I too will be abstaining from this vote. Ms. Ramsauer worked on my campaign last year and is a close personal friend. And she did a darn good job too. Um, yeah, yeah, one out of uh, actually um, being elected, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, nonetheless, it was a, a good campaign. Um, okay, I think we've, covered that and we'll have we'll be having two extensions so um yeah we're very grateful for uh Ms. Ramsauer stepping up to serve in this important um it is a very important um board in the city um so having said that if there's anybody out there in YouTube land or however else you're listening to us tonight um we would appreciate if you have any kind of interest and background in this area, uh, be glad to have you come on board. We have other openings. Uh, Mrs. Frank, will, uh, is there a motion and a second on this, please? So moved. Second. There's the motion and second. Mrs. Frank will have the vote, please. Mr. Yoda. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Poliz. Yes. Mrs. Ka Yes. Mr. Beck. Abstain. Ms. Mill. Abstain. 
Mr. Allen. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, we have uh, the motion passes 502. We'll move to uh, item, where are we? Four. Item four, amending the mayor's proclamation of March 13th. Um, is there a motion and second this resolution tonight? So move. So move. Okay. Second. Motion and second. You had me worried there for a second. Um, we have each uh, council member has the resolution that's been amended twice so far now. Um, and we'll be amending it again tonight. So we'll have to change the language. Uh, but now that we've moved and seconded, we can discuss uh, how we want to handle the extension to what date and also the limitation on uh, individuals who can gather. Um, this, would anybody care to open the discussion on that? Ms. Mueller. Yeah, if I may, it, it continues to seem most appropriate to me for us to move um, in two week increments from this point forward, that is to say from council meeting to council meeting. Um, we know the situation's changing potentially even faster than that, but, uh, but at least that gets us to the next council meeting and then at the next council meeting we can um, reconsider the proclamation depending on what, what has changed within the um, in this in this rapidly evolving situation. Um, that said, obviously, we can always have a special meeting if for some reason the governor were to dramatically loosen restrictions sometime within the next two weeks, we could have a special meeting that, that allowed us to do the same. Um, and in terms of the number of people, I'll defer to other members of council. And is there considered to be a wise number at this point. <laughs> we have discussed possibly um, putting in language that we would mirror the recommendations of the, the governor. So we would not have to continually amend that number. I think that I think would be wisest. I'll second that one. Okay. I agree. Okay, that's one amendment. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there discussion on council about putting that kind of language in there that we would amend it to change with the governor's recommendation. Mr. Polizzi. Uh, real quick, before we vote on that, um, can we clarify just for everybody what exactly that current figure is? It's 25 currently. We're, we're still at 10. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is everybody comfortable with that? It sounds like. Do we have the actual language? Um, we we will create the actual language. Um, in uh, <clears throat> we're going to amend the the date as well. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Rubin, can we? make that one amendment since it's one clause and then both of those the date and the language did we lose norm he's here i'm still here oh I don't, they didn't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Mr. Lubin, could we, um, we're amending the, we're, there's a motion and a second to amend the language on the uh, limiting of numbers of individuals that can get together. And we wanna put language in there that just uh, says that we will uh, follow the recommendations of the governor, whatever, as he changes it, that will be the provision in the city. Um, 
since that's one clause there as far as the date, because we had uh, the Councilwoman Mealy had suggested we go uh, meeting to meeting, so amending it for two weeks. Um, could we make one amendment to, or, or one motion to amend both of those? Yes, they can be done at one time. Okay. So we're amending the whole clause then. Yeah, that's correct. Well, first of all, we would we would put another where is in there instead of now therefore be a further resolve. Whereas, or not where is, whereas um, the city council of the city of Williamsport um, extended the mayor's proclamation through May 14th. <coughs> we, I, that's true. We got to amend that clause first <laughs> before we can create a new clause. <laughs> uh, very true, Randy. So that we um, can keep the, so that this can be five pages long by the time we're done. But the historical record will be accurate, Randy. Yes, that's true. Um, so, yeah, I would suggest we we make that whereas um, whereas take out the be it further resolve whereas the city council of the city of Williamsport extended the mayor's proclamation through May 14, 2020 and extended the limit on the number of individuals at gathering events or conferences to 10 individuals. Mm -hmm. That would uh, accurately describe what we did last meeting. Okay, so that's a motion, Randy? That's a motion. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Did you get that language, Mrs. Frank? I did. Awesome, thank you. Uh, any discussion on making that a historical part of the record? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, we'll take the vote on that. Or did you raise your hand, Mr. Bank? I did, yeah. Uh, so I would say um, just keeps it at maintained instead of extended. Uh, just because we we maintained that, we didn't change the number. For that did last I say extended? Portion. I meant to say maintained, yes. Maintain the limit. Mm -hmm. Did you get that, Mrs. Frank? I did, Randy. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Banks. Uh, we'll take the vote then, please, on the amendment. Yes. Mr. Mack. Yes. Mr. Flynn. Yes. Mrs. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 7 0 to amend, make, amend that clause. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Now we have to create a new clause with the whereas. I might have that, Randy, if you want okay. me to make a motion. I certainly do. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'll make a motion that we then add a, uh, a final clause to the resolution. Now, therefore, be it further resolved that the City Council of the City of Williamsport hereby extends the Mayor's proclamation through May 28th, 2020, and sets the limit on the number of individuals at gatherings, events, or conferences in accordance with the recommendation of the Office of the Governor of Pennsylvania. Okay. No arm desire. Water. He said that's fine. Okay. Um, anybody have any issues with that? Anybody want to second it? Second. Okay. Any other questions on that issue? Okay. Um, no other questions. Well, um, oh, I'm sorry. Somebody, did I miss somebody? I guess not. Uh, we'll have the vote then, Mrs. Frank, please, on that amendment. Mr. Yes. Mr. Mack. Yes. 
Mr. Polizzi. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Bank. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Frank. Motion passes 7 0. Okay, I guess we're done with that till next time. We need to vote on the final resolution now. Wasn't that an amendment? That was. Thank you, Adam. Yep. The one final vote. Okay. Is there a motion and second to vote on the amended proclamation? So moved. Second. Um, there's a motion and a second. Could we have the vote, please, Mrs. Frank? Mr. Yoda. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Bank. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. We'll move to item five. Resolution authorizing the Williamsport Bureau of Police to hire one officer. Uh, we're, this is what's tabled um, two weeks ago. So we need a motion in a second to take it off the table. There's a motion in a second. Um, we'll have the vote on that, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yo. Yes. Mr. Mack. Yes. Mr. Poliz. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Bank. Yes. Ms. Mill. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. And that resolution is now back on the table. Um, would you read that resolution in short form, please, Mrs. Frank? Resolution authorizing the Williamsport Bureau of Police to hire one police officer, Brett Barbrick. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Chief Hagan, welcome tonight. Uh, thank you, President Allison, Vice President Mealy, members of council, members of the administration. It is my great privilege and honor to come before you tonight and again to introduce to you uh, Police Officer Brett Garbrick of the Old Light Cumming Police Department. Uh, Brett is 23. Um, he lives in our area. He's the son of John Garbrick and Angela Bider. Um, he's the 2014 graduate of South Williamsport High School, the graduate of Messiah College uh, with a bachelor's degree in psychology. He uh, has attended and graduated the Mansfield Police Academy. And as I already said, uh, he's a police officer uh, with Old Light Cumming. Uh, I can attest to the quality of that agency nearby. And I can assure you that he has been trained very well since starting there. We are very, very lucky to have Brett interested in testing for our police department. Um, we expect great things from him should he should you vote to hire him, his badge number will be badge number 55. And he will, uh, as, a, as an already certified officer, he will go right to work. So um, I recommend, oh, he was also number eight on our hiring list, as you can see in your packets there. And the mayor approved his hiring back in April prior to me bringing him before you in early earlier this month. Um, so I recommend that we hire him as soon as possible to replenish our ranks and I welcome any questions. Thank you, Chief Hagan. This was uh, initially reviewed in finance. And are there any other comments on this hire? I think from finance to revisit this or? We did revisit this, Randy, um, but more in the context of a general uh, discussion about hirings in the police department and the city's economic situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I can expand on that here as, as you know, or with the next item, um, depending on our preference. 
Um, in fact, it even enters into the item that follows it, item number seven. So um, we can keep going over it. Um, the, the general gist of the discussion at the Finance Committee um, two weeks ago when we looked at Mr. the, the potential hiring of Mr. Garbrick um, related to the level of economic uncertainty that, um, as we're all well aware, exists not just in in the city of Williamsport, but throughout the Commonwealth, across the country, and across the world, mm -hmm. um, we uh, it is it is very hard for us to calculate what our worst case scenario is in terms of um, a dramatic change in the city's income. And um, in light of that, it uh, it was suggested by members of the finance committee that that even though we had made certain decisions about increasing staffing in, in some of our departments it might be wise to, to take a little bit of a wait and see approach on that given the, um, given the, the, the pandemic. Um, we, uh, we requested further information from the finance department and the police um, in the intervening two weeks and, uh, and the finance department um, and the police both provided us with further information on the, on the part of Mr. Pavlock. It was a schematic that um, contained some budgetary proje projections for the rest of 2020. Um, predicated on the idea of a, a, a somewhat significant, um, about one and a half million, $2 million contraction in the city's budget. Um, 6%, I think it was, Joe, if I'm, if I'm not wrong, um, that we were looking at uh, our, our overall collections in terms of real estate taxes um, and permits, et cetera, et cetera, changing. Um, and, uh, um, we sort of stacked that up against some information from the police department that that dealt with the concept of uh, overtime and um, the need for uh, staffing on different shifts and um, and we wound up um, while we didn't revisit specifically the, the hiring of Mr. Garbrick we uh, I, I believe it was the general sentiment among the finance committee that we certainly recommended um, hire, bringing the police department up to a total of 48 hires and uh, um, and that we but we would prefer to be cautious on the on the 49th hire as, as everyone's aware we had initially authorized 49 officers in the um, in the 2020 budget um, but we we felt that it would be prudent to to wait at least another few months um, if not till closer to the end of the year to to achieve that full complement until we have a little bit better sense of the of the impact of the pandemic uh, that said, at the time that we were having that discussion, Mr. Garbrick would have been the 48th hire in the department. Um, however, uh, in the meantime, um, we did uh, um, we, we did have a, a slight change in in some of our hiring, and I'll let the chief go into that perhaps a little further. Um, but uh, but um, at this point, I, I think that I will be supporting the the hiring of both Mr. Garbrick and Ms. Heath. Um, and I'll defer to other members of the finance committee to to comment on Mr. Garbrick or the or the financial information we reviewed on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mailey. Finance committee. Councilwoman Katz. You're muted. Okay, there we go. Uh, yes, we did do a, a, a really a large discussion as, as where we stand uh, with our budget. It had nothing to do with the hire. It just had to do financially. But I'm just going to conclude with this. Welcome, Brett. We're very happy that you're joining our force. Uh, Want to make sure you keep safe. And uh, we're really pleased to have you on board. And we want to thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Katz. Other comments or questions? Yes, I, I think we're, we're all grateful uh, for your desire to serve on the Williamsport Bureau of Police, Mr. Darbick, and um, we're anxious to, to see you take your position. Um, is, would you care to say anything tonight? Yeah, I just want to say thank you uh, to everyone. Uh, I'm very excited. Um, when I set out to um, become a police officer, this was the the place that I had dreamt of. So now that it's happening, uh, it feels amazing. I can't wait to get to work. 
Sounds great. We appreciate it. Um, I see no other comments. So uh, Mrs. Frank will have the vote on Officer Darbert. Okay. Randy, can I ask uh, when these officers will be sworn in and how? Um, I guess he will have to come into the office, correct? Oh, yes, that's fine. I just wondered when. Oh. I have a suggestion on that. Okay. Thank you, Chief. I could contact uh, Mrs. Frank and make an appointment prior to their starting date on uh, June 8th. That sounds perfect. Thank you for taking that under your uh, jurisdiction, Chief Hagan. Um, how's that sound, Mrs. Frank? Sounds great. All righty. Um, we'll have the vote then. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Millie. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank, and welcome aboard. Brett, and uh, if we were in City Hall, and I'll share this with both of you tonight, um, over the, the city seal, it says uh, protect and serve. And those are your part of your duties is to protect uh, the people and property of the city of Williamsport and to also serve them at the same time. It's a tough job, we know it, and that's why we're so grateful that there are people, qualified people like you that are willing to step up and, and take that kind of position. And as always, we, we care about your safety. Uh, prime, our prime concern is for your safety first as you carry out those duties. So uh, we all congratulate you and welcome you tonight. Any other comments from council for Mr. Garbrick? Just uh, welcome aboard, Officer Garbrick. We're happy to have you, and uh, I look forward to meeting you in person. Congratulations. Congrats and welcome aboard. Yeah, welcome aboard. This is great. Okay, we'll, we'll move on to item six, resolution authorizing the Bureau of Police to hire one officer. Uh, would you read that in short form, please, Mrs. Frank? Resolution authorizing the Williamsport Bureau Police to hire one police officer, Erica Heath. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Is there a motion tonight and a second? So move. There's a motion and a second. Um, Chief Hagan. Again, it is my uh, absolute privilege and honor here to introduce to you uh, uh, Deputy Sheriff of Lycoming County, Deputy Sheriff Erica Heath. Um, Erica is 24 years old. She lives locally here. Um, she's worked for the Sheriff's Department since 2017. Uh, she is the daughter of Claire and Donna Heath of uh, Montour County. Her father is the sheriff there. Um, she's a 2014 graduate of Danville High School and a uh, magna cum laude graduate of Bloomsburg University with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Um, she was also the captain of the women's rugby team. And uh, she uh, will be, if, uh, if her hiring is approved, she will be badge number 12. Uh, she is along with uh, Officer Garbrick uh, a very good candidate, and we would be very, very lucky to have her here should you choose to uh, to vote for her hiring, which I strongly encourage. I welcome any questions. Thank you, Chief Hagan. Um, I guess, uh, Councilwoman Neely, we could, since this was also reviewed in finance, we could just carry the conversation on that's already been started if there's anything 
Thank sure. You. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think the only real information to add is that Ms. Um, Ms. Heath will be joining us uh, just in time to begin attending the police academy with a hire that we made earlier this year, um, uh, Charles Schwab. And, um, and consequently, um, that, that actually played a bit of a role in finance discussion. The, the, the academy starts on June 15th. Mm -hmm. um, so, so clearly, uh, uh, moving on, moving on the higher sooner rather than later makes it uh, more possible for Ms. Heath to prepare herself to, to attend the academy and, um, and makes it a possibility for her to, uh, begin serving on our police force at the beginning of, uh, well, hopefully by the beginning of the year, more or less. Um, so as, as we know with officers who, that we hire who are, uh, not Act 120 certified, we do have to, um, they will have to go to the police academy before they can begin training to be on our police force. So there's a little bit of a delay and, uh, and the sooner we move on this, the sooner we'll have another, um, another and another female officer on the force, uh, which is always good news. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Other comments or questions from council? Um, I think Mr. Mackey had his hand up first and then we'll go to Councilwoman Katz. Uh, yeah, just uh, Ms. Heath, um, welcome to the city of Williamsport. I fully intend to vote yes for your hiring tonight. And I just think it's important uh, to, to say that I would have been in favor of hiring Ms. Heath if she was Officer 49 as well. Um, you know, we're, we're talking about a, a worst case scenario financially is hard to predict. Um, I understand that uh, a worst case scenario from a severely understaffed police department um, is not so hard to predict because now we're talking about people's lives here. Um, and uh, I just think it's very important now, you know, to not lose sight of, uh, you know, when we start talking about hiring officer number 49, whoever that may be, that that process is gonna take a little while um, and that we might not have to talk about this again until the end of the year. So hopefully once we get to officer 49, we won't be having these same discussions, but I just think it's very important um, that we, um, again, I'll say it again, all staffing is not created equal in my, in my mind. And uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. Um, I just want to get that out there and I just want everybody else on council to kind of keep that in the back of their minds as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. Mackey. It's very thoughtful and um, definitely something for, for deeper consideration. Councilwoman Katz. Yes, I would like to welcome Ms. Heath to the, uh, the department. Um, as a woman, I'm thrilled that we're getting another woman officer. Um, impressed with your credentials. And I think you're gonna be a tremendous asset. Again, for you, keep safe. And we're really thrilled to have you. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you, Mrs. Katz. Other comments or questions? Mr. Yoder. Yeah, as one of the members of the Finance Committee that um, has been, I think, probably bringing the other argument to the table here, I just want Officer Heath to know welcome um, and that I fully have your back as you join the team and you protect our citizens. Um, I think a lot of the discussion is not, a, it's not about you. Um, it's just about, I think, trying to figure out this crazy situation that we're in. So just know that we all support you. We're all glad you're here. And um, we're looking forward to the great things you're going to do for the city. So thanks a lot. Mr. Banks. So welcome aboard. Um, once again, just to piggyback of what Bonnie was saying, it's wonderful to have another female officer coming aboard. So that's great. Um, we have kind of a very unique policing situation in Williamsport. You know, we have a lot of the amenities and, uh, and the positives and negatives of a large city but we're kind of tucked, tucked into a rural area here. So it might be an interesting uh, learning environment for you. So we're glad to have you board. Well said. Any other comments? Uh, President Allison, I had one more thing if, if the members of council are done. Um, absolutely, go ahead, Chief. Uh, as Mealy had mentioned earlier, and I think this might be the appropriate time to explain what most of you know, but not all of you, and that is that we had another candidate 
who we re recently hired, uh, Kristen Wright, withdraw from consideration prior to starting. Her start date was going to be June 1st. And so that's what caused the change. And that's why uh, Erica Heath is not number 49 and she's now 48. So just to clear that up, as I said, most of you know, and uh, Ms. Mealy is right. Our plan is to get uh, Erica Heath signed up as quickly as possible. And for her to go to the Mansfield Police Academy with her old partner from the Sheriff's Department, Charles Schwab, so that we can get them back at the end of the year and get them out on the street uh, with Officer Garbrick and everyone else. So we look forward to that and thank you for your time. Thank you, Chief Hagan. Uh, we appreciate your, um, your very organized and passionate approach to heading up the, the Bureau of Police. And, um, you know, there may be discussions at times about money that in, intrudes upon uh, every conversation, uh, but in no way means that we don't appreciate your dedication to the mission of protecting and serving the citizens of Williamsport. And we fully do want to support that as best as we can. Um, Councilwoman Thank you, Katz. sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Councilwoman Katz. Yes, I think um, just to piggyback on some of the, what the chief says, I think everybody should be aware of from the time that these officers go to the academy and by the time they get on the street working on their own, really, it's going to be what, chief, about a year, isn't it? It's, uh, it's at the very least about 10 months depending on the length of the academy, some of them are a little bit longer than others. And some officers get through our field training program a little quicker than others do. But it's at, at the very least about 10 months before they're in a car by themselves answering calls without a training officer. Which I think we really have to keep in mind with our hiring, where we stand number wise. As I said before, I've been on council, this is going into my third term. I don't ever remember us keeping status quo with numbers. The number always fluctuates down, not up. And uh, I would really like us to all keep in mind that it's vitally important for our safety to make sure that the complement is that a safety number. And uh, we have to really, really look at that thoroughly. Thank you, Councilman Kent. Any other comments or questions? Um, Mr. Mackey. Uh, yeah, just that uh, good luck in the police academy. Um, the, the, the first week is probably going to be the toughest. So if you can get through the first week, which I'm sure you can, you'll be just fine. That comes from experience, right, John? Yes, ma'am. So maybe your uh, rugby background will serve you well as you get in some scrums there. Um, we do welcome you aboard and appreciate your desire to be a part of the Williamsport Bureau of Police. Um, I think you can tell we're all, uh, we're, we're excited and positive about the future of Williamsport. And um, the, Police department is, is a big part of that because you're you're both part of a, a new demographic that's shifted into the department over the past uh, few years, four or five years, and um, it's exciting to see uh, the youth movement. I'm going to call it. Um, you're both adults, but um, it's nice to know that that we have people that are in your demographic that are interested in this part because it's a difficult job uh very rewarding at the same time so uh, we do welcome you aboard Ms. Heath, and looking forward to meeting you in person when you're back out of school and back here on the streets of williamsport um would you care to offer any comments um i just want to say thank you to everybody for your kind words tonight um and Thanks to Chief Hagan, and I'm excited to get to the academy and get back home and working. 
We're excited too. Um, hearing no other comments or questions, Mrs. Frank will have the vote, please. Mr. Young. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Feliz. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Bank. Yes. Ms. Meal. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Uh, good evening to you both. And welcome aboard. Um, we'll move to item seven. Resolution for a contract between the Williamsport Bureau of Police and Shallow Creek Kennel. In sh could you read that in short form, please, Mrs. Frank? Resolution for a contract between the Williamsport Bureau of Police and Shallow Creek Kennels Incorporated. Thank you. Is there a motion and a second? So moved. Move. There it is. Motion and a second. Chief Hagan. Thank you again, members of council administration. Uh, before you is a resolution to begin the second phase of our canine program. This was discussed uh, in great detail in the finance meeting. All of the ins and outs, uh, overtime replacement of the supervisor who would be going to the school. The length of the school uh, from July to or excuse me, from June until through the end of July, being uh, nearly six weeks or uh, 38 or 39 days. Uh, all of the issues, the cost, and uh, I described in detail the generous donations that have gone up to uh, an over $78,000 total that we have more than enough money available for this particular uh, dog um, uh, and uh, not just for the dog, but the training and the first year of maintenance as well. Um, there were concerns when I brought it up that uh, we might be moving too quick on a second dog and also concerning the length of time of the academy. Um, the difference uh, being that the one we went to in the winter last year was only four weeks and this one is closer to six. I was corrected by one of my great supervisors, Brian McGee, the one who we would send to this academy after the last meeting. He, uh, he took a look at the schedule and assured me that the one in the winter this year would also be the same length. So I did on my own check that all of the academies this year appear to be 38 or 39 days long or so. It, it, I believe last year when we sent Minier, uh, it was uh, that the class size was smaller. And so they didn't need a full six weeks to get them the reps they needed. The one that's scheduled for this, uh, uh, this winter would be a similar length of time. So we would experience a small amount of overtime. We couldn't stop all of it. It would be small uh, and especially in a time when we are talking about not being able to fill our 49th position, another dog would be especially important. It'd be like a partner to that officer. It would be a dog on another one of the two night shifts, which, which would be very important to us. We don't know, as you've, as you've outlined, where we're going to be at the end of the year. And if we are in a position at the end of the year when we can't, where we can't hire number 49, or possibly even number 48 when the assistant chief retires, then another dog would provide that extra capability and another partner on the street for one of the night shifts. So I just think it's especially important um, uh, to consider this seriously. Um, I, I've said this to you and I know I have your trust and I appreciate that. If I didn't think we could handle this or manage the second dog, we wouldn't even be talking about it right now. So I appreciate the comments that have been made. I appreciate the concern on council's part about our finances and I welcome any questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Hagan. Uh, this was reviewed in finance and public safety, I believe. Um, yes. Uh, let's start with public safety. 
we did review this at public safety and my biggest concern first of all there were a couple of things with the four week and the six week uh and then to find out that we just lucked into four weeks last year because of the small class um our other biggest concern was um when the city starts opening up um what kind of manpower are we going to need on the street um because people with people being uh, sheltered and their lives being turned upside down, we don't know how everybody's gonna react when they're gonna be out and about. Um, that was my, my concern with that. Um, the other concern is of course, um, uh, vacation times. Are we going to you know, uh, be short staffed? But when you talk to the chief, as far as uh, when things are gonna be opening up, uh, so far, nobody's taking any vacations because there's nowhere to go right now. And it doesn't look like too many things are going to be opening up in the early summer, be it June and July. Uh, I, I think if we really look at this realistically, a lot of things are going to start opening up. People are going to have to take their vacations in the fall and the winter, which at that point is going to leave us uh, a little short staffed if because from what I understand, we can't roll, you can't roll over their vacations. So they're gonna to have to take vacation. So as far as I can see, uh, I think it's more beneficial at this point when the city is still uh, calm, um, vacations aren't in demand right now. I think it would behoove us to send the officer to um, the kennel school with the dog at this point in time uh, instead of later in the fall and winter when we really may need more manpower and not only more manpower, but maybe we'll need the extra dog at that point. So, um, but that was my concern. I will let other people on public safety make their statements. Is there a, a recommendation out of public safety? It, at that point, we it was, an, uh, was a, a, a rec we, rec we recommended no, no recommendation. Okay. That's what we did. Okay. Um, other comments from. Okay, um, Mr. Mackey. No, I, I would just back up everything Councilwoman Katz just said. You know, I think it's vitally important that we send um, this officer to the academy. And uh, is it June? I believe. Um, yeah. No, that's it. I, I just agree with everything that uh, Councilwoman Katz just said. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mackey. Uh, Ms. Mealy, it was reviewed in finance then. It was, and finance also forwarded it to the full body of council with no recommendation. Uh, at the time, at least, I, we all concurred, I believe, that there were a number of reasons why we should uh, hesitate on acquiring the second dog and training the second dog. Um, one of the thoughts clearly was the potentially shorter length of duration of the uh, January. Chief, is it January or December? The the training class. I don't know the exact dates, but the winter class, uh, which will occur at a similar time when many are went. I I counted the days here just prior to this meeting, and it yes. looks like it's thirty eight or thirty nine. Um, the same as the one he would be going to in the summer. It, it seems to me though that the class when we authorized Tyson Minier to go actually started in the beginning of January. Uh, I think it was December 30th to January 31st. So it was right. definitely about a week shorter. Yeah, but, but so I guess what I'm saying is it seems as though it commences really in the beginning of 2021, not the end of 2020. Right, which is probably not a super popular time to take vacation amongst our officers. That was the one that happened last year. Like mm -hmm. I said, I, I don't have uh, the dates this time, but um, it's it's about a week longer this time. The only the only issue I would caution caution you on there with the vacations is simply we don't. Uh, we don't know. Our, our officers are still trying to use the 10 carryover vacation days they got from last year, and they haven't been able to use them prior to June 1st in, in accordance with the CBA. So we're actually looking at extending 
the days that they carried over from last year because they haven't even been able to use them yet because we've canceled so many vacation and holidays. So inevitably what we're going to be looking at is uh, having to come up with some arrangement probably by the end of the year, given our situation where we're going to have to at least let them carry over either more days or possibly buy some of them back because they're just not going to be able to get it all in. So what Ms. Katz or Mrs. Katz just said is right. We're probably looking at a situation where there's either a, an equal amount of vacation in July, August and November, December, if not maybe more at the end of the year, but it's hard to tell. Right. Um, and it, it's generally been my understanding that the most active time for the police department in terms of calls is the summer months, correct? Absolutely, without question, uh, June through September. Yeah, um, which would be when we would be training this this individual on the dog, correct? Um, yes, ma'am. The current proposal, right. Um, so I guess, so Randy, the, the discussion in the Finance Committee centered around two items. One was potentially the duration of the, uh, or excuse me, that's addressed to all of council, not just Randy. Um, <laughs> uh, um, you know, that the, 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 the duration of the training period, which ideally would be, would be shorter and more of an off season, but regardless, um, is more ideally located perhaps at the, um, at least if it falls as last year's did at the beginning of the year, um, then, then dead in the middle of the summer. Um, the other, the other discussion that we had at finance related, well, we had a handful of other discussions. Um, one related to the commitment of officer time, not just in terms of training the, the, the officer and the animal, um, if you have the, the, the six week training class. Um, but from that point forward, the officer and the dog go in for training one shift out of every, um, out of every two weeks. So one shift out of every 10 uh, is a training shift. Um, and then a half an hour out of each shift, um, 15 minutes at the beginning and 15 minutes at the end is reserved for dog maintenance time. So the officer who, um, who is, who is uh, in charge of the dog effectively works a half an hour less per shift um, on the street or in whatever capacity because, because he or she is, is um, training the, the, or is, is maintaining the animal. Um, all of that said, uh, the, um, oh, excuse me, sorry, I've got a sick daughter back here. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, so in light of the discussions that we've been having with the police um, over the last few weeks regarding staffing and, and needing more staffing and, and the fact that we've had to pull an officer out of the SRO program, that we had to pull an officer earlier this year out of the SRO program because we needed another man on the street um, and because we wanted to provide staffing to the um, drug task force. Uh, some of the discussion in finance centered around the idea of do we really want to encumber for further officer time um, on a, on, on, um, with an animal when we know that we're already somewhat short staffed in the department and when we know that we may not feel comfortable moving forward with a hire for number 49. Uh, the final um, discussion that we had, and this, this is, has, has long been my particular point, um, but, but falls a little bit off to the side here, is uh, the, the average um, useful working life of, of a police dog is about eight years. And, um, and so if we're to continue the, the dog program that, we've, that we started off on earlier this year, we will... Um, probably need to replace each of these dogs in eight years time. Um, and it had, had been a matter of discussion when we brought the initial animal onto the force that it might be wiser to wait a year between dog acquisitions to lengthen out the period that we have. It, that is to say that the, the, the sort of initial upkeep of a dog is about $20,000 um, followed by $6,000 annually for maintenance at an additional um, thirteen to fifteen thousand dollars in officer time annually, um, and, and so to to sort of defray having to do a a twenty thousand to to 
to do one dog annually means that the city only has to budget $20,000 per year. Whereas if we take on three dogs here in the first year, then we're looking at a potential replacement cost of $60,000 in a year um, when and if these dogs need to be replaced eight years down the road. Um, that was the, the final point from the Finance Committee. As I said, Finance um, did forward this to the full body of council with no recommendation, as did Public Safety. Um, and I am personally, I, I can't speak, it seems as though Mrs. Mrs. Katz has had a bit of a change of heart, but I personally am disinclined to support this until we get to the end of the year and look once again at where we're at budgetarily, what kind of staffing we can afford in the police department, and, um, and, and just sort of take a holistic look at, at, at our budget Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Councilwoman Neely. Covered all the points there. Mr. Yoder. Yeah. Um, Bonnie, Liz, um, Councilman Mackey summed it up all pretty well between both committees. Um, really falls down to me for manpower. You know, when we've been talking about the 49th officer, we've had a very vigorous debate over the past several weeks, weeks with staffing. And uh, it just doesn't make sense in my mind to pull an officer off the street in our peak time of the year when we're going to need officers the most. Um, you know, with the new information that the um, that the that the winter training will be the same amount of time, um, I certainly uh, understand that. But I, I also believe we're not going to hopefully have the demand as, as much. The vacation thing is a concern, but. Um, I think first and foremost, we need officers on the street as many as we can in the summer. So um, I'm going to have to, well, I, I really support this program. I think it's great for our police force and our, for our city. And I will look forward to having the second canine on board um, in due time. Um, I don't think this is the right time to do it. So I'm going to have to, unfortunately, not support this at this time. But Chief, thank you for um, all your work on this. Councilwoman Katz, you, you as well, in spearheading this. Thank you for getting this off the ground and running. Um, and I'll look forward to working with you guys on this at a more appropriate time. Thank you, Mr. Yoder. Mr. Banks. Thank you, President Allison. I really feel like these um, oncoming police officers are getting a crash course in city politics. <laughs> um, Chief, could you just run us through what our, uh, what the complement will be come June, June through July versus what it will be you know, in December or January, since we have Officer Heath potentially finishing up the academy at that time, would we not be up an officer at, at the in the beginning of winter? Actually, it's true. Um, we have, uh, with the hiring of uh, Brett Garbrick and Erica Heath, we have 48. But in July, uh, when uh, Sergeant McGee would be gone to the academy, we have, as I've said before, we have uh, an officer uh, deploying overseas for more than four months. And then uh, with two gone to the academy, uh, 48 is actually 45, okay? So it's tighter in the, in the uh, summer. And just to add to what uh, Ms. Mealy was saying, it's actually not 15 and 15 anymore but because we've had to factor in the weekends uh, to be correct, it's not 2.5, it's 3.5. It's actually uh, 45 minutes a day, not 30 minutes a day. Um, so it's a little bit more than what she said. Um, my concern, uh, not, that, not to sound like I'm in a hurry. Uh, again, I wouldn't bring it before you if I didn't think we could handle it. Couple of things. Every time these dogs show up, um, even before they show up, when they're just barking, coming down the street, the most dangerous people who I have ever seen in my life walk away. They don't want nothing to do with them. And so what I'm thinking of is a scenario in the winter where a guy is going to pull a gun on one of our guys and it, manpower isn't going to matter. The fact is that the dog being there and the sooner we can get that dog there, regardless of the manpower, the better. The other thing is understanding that we have concerns about the need to replace them. And Ms. Mealy is right. The average life is seven, eight years. So the less we space them out, the more likely it is that we'll have to replace them at or near the same time later. 
Now that may not be the case. One might last five years, one might last eight years. You don't really know, but generally speaking, that's, that's an average. In the last year, we've raised $78,000. So if we were more modest and, and we had a goal of let's say 40,000 a year on average over the next eight years, we will have effectively somewhere in the neighborhood of 250 to $300,000 in seven or eight years to work with um, for the replacement of these dogs. Now, obviously we'll spend small amounts of money along the way, um, but that's the kind of money that you might actually be able to use to help get canine vehicles, not just dogs. So we expect some uh, pretty high numbers with regard to the raising funds certainly considering what we've done in the last year. I'm not so worried about seven or eight years from now from the standpoint of money, but I do understand everything you've said about manpower. And to be honest, it's going to be a little tight um, when we send them, um, but we're willing to do that because I think the sooner we get them there and get them back, the sooner this dog will be saving lives, including our own. And, uh, and that's, I think, the most important thing to the to the program. Thank you, Chief. Other comments or questions? Mr. Yoder. Yeah, I appreciate all the comments and sentiments, Chief Hagan. I just, not necessarily as much about money on this one, it's about manpower. We've talked a lot over the past three weeks about being short on manpower. Um, still doesn't make any sense to me to pull officer off the street to send him in training in the middle of our busiest time of the year. Um, when we have the most at-risk citizens due to crime. So um, nonetheless, appreciate it. On the issue of training, sir, just one other thing. We commonly send officers to training throughout the year. There would have probably, although I don't have my training schedule right here in front of me, there would have been other people gone to other trainings that have been canceled. As I said the other day, we've canceled about $20,000 worth of training money that will not be spent and will go back to the bottom line at the end of the year already this year because of the coronavirus. So it's kind of actually extraordinary that this academy is still running, but it's an essential uh, thing, so it is. And uh, we, are, we are absolutely willing if we need to, to wait, um, but uh, it's, it's really up to you. Thank you for your time. Other questions or comments? Mr. Politi. Thank you, President Allison. Uh, listening to everybody, um, you know, I'm not one to add a whole bunch of talk where I don't think I need to. But uh, in this instance, I, you know, with respect to everybody else here, uh, I fully support bringing on the additional canine. Um, I know Officer or Sergeant McGee, I think he'll do a great job. Um, canines save lives. Like the chief said, uh, you even hear the dog barking and right off the bat, you're deterred from doing anything out of fear of the canine. More so, one could argue they're more, more afraid of the canine than they are of, of uh, what could happen with a, a scuffle with an officer. One might be more afraid of the canine. Um, and uh, as it was said before, is that the summer does become the busiest time of year. Chief, you were saying from approximately June to September. Um, and I was looking through the training time for this. It would be June 22nd until July 31st. Um, Councilman Yoder, I understand completely where you're coming from. In my mind, I see that and I go, well, June 22nd to July 31st, we still have August and September, the crazy times. Um, all the more reason to get this officer and get the canine, get them through the training and get them out on the streets um, to support other, other, our other officers. Um, and also in light of what we've talked about with our financial responsibility and uh, hiring additional officers and waiting to see where we pan out with, with uh, because of the, the, the coronavirus, I think that um, with us not being able to potentially hire all the officers that the chief would like to this year or that we would like to this year, I definitely think the additional canine unit uh, would be a true asset 
if we're not able to have all the uh, the number of officers that we would like to have. So uh, I just feel like that uh, I had to put in my two cents there. It was probably more like ten cents, but um, I do uh, I, I do fully support the additional canine unit on this one. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Chief, I had a couple questions um, as far as um, shifts. Uh, when uh, crime picks up during the warmer months, uh, is it equally spread across the shift? Or I would imagine there'd be maybe one shift that's heavier than another. Uh, can you speak to that? Commonly over the years, sir, we've seen that the four to 12 shift itself where the canine officer currently serves, Officer Minier, and where also Sergeant McGee serves um, is the shift that gets somewhere between 45% and 50%, excuse me, of the total calls of our uh, patrol division. We see usually on the day shift, 30 to 35%, and on the morning watch, typically around uh, 15 to 20, although we must factor in the fact that on the morning watch, uh, there's a much higher, as you can imagine, from midnight to eight in the morning, a much higher percentage of crime, uh, break-ins, burglaries, uh, people fighting and using weapons and stuff at night, and also in the late hours on the night shift. So the night shift is the busiest. He would be coming off of that, um, which is why in anticipation of that, I approached uh, Corporal uh, Stoltzfus and asked him if he would uh, move over to that shift as, as it is necessary to help cover some of that manpower. And I also asked uh, Lieutenant Miller, our specially assigned crime lieutenant, if he could assist with that as well. Both, both of them uh, volunteered to do that as necessary. So I don't think there's gonna be as big of a manpower issue. Everyone's willing to pitch in but again, we are tight and we're gonna be, and uh, we don't know where we're gonna be with calls in a month and a half from now. It certainly has been slower the last month and a half, but we can't say for sure that that'll stay the same. So typically to answer your question, sir, uh, this time of year in particular, but really all year, the night watch from 4 p.m. to 12 p.m. is the busiest. Um, I guess uh, my other question then would be um, recently, since things have kind of loosened up some, have you noticed uh, an uptick? Uh, not, not a consequential number of more crimes being committed than there were earlier. In recent weeks, the number of calls have picked up. We have seen some crime I wish I had another Corona year to compare it to, and then I could be certain. But what I can what what I can say to you is that uh, it slowed way down with the restrictions across the board. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, violent crime did not. As you know, there were a number of shootings in a short period of time, including a homicide. Um, unfortunately, our uh, our gangsters and drug dealers don't care about the coronavirus but everyone else does and things slowed down um, except for particular types of theft crime and such. Uh, the number of, of uh, calls has picked up a little bit, um, but it's certainly not at the level that we expect during this, this time of the year. It's still a little bit slower. Um, so we don't know where it'll go in the next couple months. We're watching it uh, carefully. There are days over the past couple weeks that have been busy and then there are days that have been pretty slow. So we take it day by day like all of you. Thanks, Chief. Um, if we're done, it appears we are discussing this issue. Um, Mrs. Frank will have the vote, please. Mr. Yoder. No. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Banks. No. 
Ms. Mealy. No. Mr. Alice. Yes. Uh, motion passes four three. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. We'll move to item eight, resolution for an MOU between On the Pulse LLC and the City of Williamsport. Could you read that in short form, please, Mrs. Frank? Resolution for a memorandum of understanding between On the Pulse LLC and the City of Williamsport. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, is there a motion on this in a second? So moved. Second. Motion in a second. Um, Chief Hagan again. Uh, once again, uh, thank you, uh, members of council. Um, before you is a resolution uh, to approve a memorandum of understanding between On the Pulse LLC and uh, the city of Williamsport. Uh, we, uh, uh, I've gotten to know the founder of uh, On the Pulse uh, Incorporated over the past several months, and we've discussed uh, feature stories and potential feature stories that uh, she would like to do on our police department uh, in our effort to become accredited, become more professional and feature our uh, recruitment program and, and all of our uh, special features of our department. We think that this, uh, this agreement that you have before you and the details that you see uh, would be uh, one, of the, one of the great ways to try to do that. Um, I have the highest regard for uh, Ms. Reiner. I think she's a fantastic person and uh, has our best interest at heart and uh, is willing or was willing to make uh, the necessary changes that our solicitor recommended to this agreement to accommodate our concerns with regard to uh, content and editing and so forth, as you can see on the attached documents. Uh, this, this agreement or some of the features would involve a day in the life of a Williamsport police officer. We would have to choose an officer and then she would ride along uh, with that officer and do a, a feature. It would also involve, as we have discussed uh, and had many discussions in the past year on all of our great female officers and all of their achievements, she would do a, a 20 to 30 minute interviews with each of them and do a story on them. And finally, uh, as we just got done discussing the new canine program as well, um, we, uh, we will be able to use some of this video as long as we give credit to On the Pulse, obviously, uh, and feature some of that in some of our uh, efforts as well. I think it's a win-win and it costs us, as uh, Mr. Yoder highlighted the other day, it costs us no money. Um, this is a, a professional person, a professional company, and uh, I highly recommend that we uh, we approve this agreement and get to work on this as soon as we can. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Hagan. Um, this was reviewed in uh, public safety, correct? Yes, it was. Um, as Mr. Yoder said, there's no cost to the city, and I think this is going to be a terrific program. Uh, Ms. Reiner, you have done uh, other programs in throughout the county, haven't you? Yes, yeah, so we've done another a number of other features on other police departments and other county programs. I think this is going to be a tremendous asset, and also I think uh, the fire department put a bid in also. <laughs> so uh, yes, I'd love to do a piece on the fire department as well. <laughs> So we think this would, um, it's going to be a tremendous asset. And I think we're all looking forward to seeing the finished piece. And thank you very much. And if this did pass with a positive recommendation. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Katz. Other comments from public safety? Mr. Bank? Well, not on public safety, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, Chief, we kind of put you through the ringer in some of these city council meetings. But um, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times, uh, you're the right man for the job. So. 
It'd be nice if the uh, if the public could get an eye on that, and this is a great opportunity to to, uh, to display the good work that is being done by our police force. Thank you very much, sir. And if you think I'm good, you ought to see the people that work for me. Mr. Yoder. Yeah, I'll second uh, Councilman Banks' sentiments. You know, we've had a lot of collaboration and disagreement here, but I think we all back the police department fully, including Chief Hagan. And, uh, you know, I, I've been I've been following one of the Pulse's news is uh, segments that they've done on other areas of the county and of the region, and uh, they do a really good job. And I'm excited to see what they put together and how they highlight the police department. It'll be good for the police, good for the city, and I think good for the community. So thanks for working with us and uh, look forward to seeing what you put together. Definitely. Other questions or comments from council members? Mr. Mackey. Yeah, just uh, second and I guess thirding everything that everybody just said. I would like to obviously, as Bonnie said, uh, see this move on to the fire department. I don't see why we couldn't then move on to the streets and parks department. I feel like the more people know um, the hard work that goes into running this city by a lot of dedicated people, I think the better. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm in full support of this. Good point, Mr. Mackey. Other comments or questions? Well, as you can see, we're very excited about having some positive things to talk about and positive things to offer the public at this time. Um, sometimes right now, it's, they're few and far between. Uh, and um, I think we need to, to get as much information out there. It's not a fluff piece by any means. It's just there's a lot of factual information that people don't understand about uh, how the police department works or the fire department. Um, all they know is that uh, when they need them, they want them there right away. So we can tell them uh, maybe the story of how they get prepared so they can be there right away and do the job that people want them to do. Mr. Mackey? Sorry, just uh, to change topics, just Oh, slightly. I'm sure that Officer Heath and Officer Garbrick are enjoying the day in the life of a city council meeting. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and far be it for me to speak out of turn here, I, I, I would say that uh, they could go and enjoy the rest of their uh, Thursday evening there. There's no reason for both, if, unless you're really enjoying this, <laughs> please feel free to sign off and uh, we'll hopefully see you both real soon. I second that. <laughs> It was nice having you here tonight, though. Um, Good luck, both of you. Congratulations. So, okay. Um, I just add a quick comment, just um, yeah. as a thank you to your consideration. And then also, you know, one of the reasons why I found it on the Pulse was specifically so we could tell stories that weren't being told or we could highlight. Mm -hmm. um, places that people wouldn't normally go or wouldn't be able to see. And that's one of the reasons why video is such a huge part of our publication as well, because it gives such a great view into these other worlds that most people wouldn't would normally not go into. So um, that's kind of the goal behind this is to really just be able to give even a little bit of a peek into the, you know, different, different facets of the city. So really appreciate the opportunity to be able to come in a little bit and, and do that for you. Thank you, it's very thoughtful. Any other comments or questions tonight? Hearing none, we'll have the vote. Mrs. Frank, please. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Meal. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. And thank you, Ms. Reiner, for being here tonight. Thank you. Um, we'll move to item nine, resolution to approve an amendment to a 2016 Cyprian. 
some kind of agreement. Mrs. Frank in short form, please. Resolution to approve an amendment to the 2016 subrecipient monitoring agreement between the County of Lycoming and the City of Williamsport. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Is there a motion and a second on this? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Um, welcome, Ms. Mrs. Young. There you are. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, this amendment extends an agreement with Lycoming County for 2016 fair funds until June 30th, uh, 2021. The city was awarded $225,000 under this agreement for the rehab of rental and owner occupied properties that are on the city's adopted historic sites and property list. The Millionaires Row Historic District was identified as a secondary target area in the original proposal. We notified 142 property owners of the opportunity to apply for these funds, and we received 10 responses. Their program requires that at least 30% of the funds benefit owners or tenants whose income is at or below 50% of the area median income, which is $29,050. Of the 10 responses that we received, only one meets the 50% area median income target. So to assure that we meet the overall program requirements of the 30%, we'll notify the property owners in the historic district about the program. And that's approximately 150 properties. After we meet the 30% requirement, we'll process the applications that we have uh, from the original mailing. Also, I stated in the finance committee meeting that, this, that student housing in the historic district may help us meet the 30% requirement but in reviewing the guidelines, student housing is not eligible for the FAIR program. So I just wanted to make that clarification. Uh, the extension of the contract to June 30, 2021 is the only change to the original agreement. And as I stated, this amendment was reviewed by the Finance Committee. Thank you, Mrs. Young. Um, was it reviewed in finance? Um, this this was reviewed in finance, Randy, and forwarded to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Um, but I'll defer to other members of the committee for further comment. Okay, thank you. Um, members of finance, care to comment on this? I really don't think we uh, had any questions with this at all. Yeah, it seems. And we passed this on with a positive recommendation. Thank you. I think it's. Seem pretty straightforward. Any other questions from council members? Hearing none. Well, oh, Mr. Banks. I just had a question um, for Mrs. Young. Um, is this just really an uh, an issue of us not having the ability to market these programs? Whenever we have, you know, the, the 10, 10 applicants seems low, considering the amount of need we have. Well, we do, a we do a mass mailing. So all the property owners that are eligible are notified by mail. Um, you know, we, we could probably put something on the website just so that somebody that is looking through the website can see that the program's available, but we, you know, we do notify the property owners directly. Uh, that definitely was not a criticism. <laughs> it was just uh, a general question as, as yeah. what our process is. Well, and the, the uh, property owner has to contribute 15%. So I don't know if that's, you know, if they're not willing to fix their property up at that certain time, maybe they don't have the 15% to contribute. Um, that might be a factor. Um, but really meeting that 50, that 30% where, where you're benefiting persons that are at 50% of the median income or lower, that's a really tough target in certain areas. Um, in the next resolution, that's the Brodart neighborhood, that was an easier um, target to meet based on the, the particular neighborhood that we were doing the project in. Well, thank you. Other questions? Randy, if I might, um, Mr. Banks, the one other thing, I think that, that Stephanie made this point, but just in case, um, the, the one other thing is that we, we need to meet uh, thirty percent of the of the funding needs to go to um, benefit an applicant or a tenant um, who's at fifty percent of the area median income or less. Um, and so the city's general approach in these programs is to try and fulfill that requirement first 
before we hand out the rest of the money. The rest of the money um, is the, the, the tenant or the applicant needs to be um, at 200% of the area median income. Obviously it's much simpler to meet that requirement. Um, so the, uh, so I think part of our stumbling block, Ms. Um, Young had mentioned that we, that we did have 10 applications, um, but only one of those applications met the 50% AMI requirement. Uh, consequently, we have to defer the other nine until we've received enough applications to meet, to, to put us within that, um, having spent 30% of the funding on 50% uh, AMI or, or, or lower um, recipients. Uh, so that, that it's a little bit of a mo moving target and it, and it sort of forces us to play a little bit of a game, I think, that, um, that might make it, make it appear as though there's less interest than there is in the program as well. Um, but the, it will clearly be easier to meet that target um, if we include the historic district in our uh, net than, than it would have been otherwise. Um, uh, that's everything. Thank you. And Mrs. Young, you said uh, student housing is not eligible, correct? That's right. That's correct. That eliminates quite a bit of property in that area as well. So um, it, there's a not as large a pool probably as one would think to draw from then. Yeah, the, the, with this program, um, property owners that are living in the property are also eligible. Mm -hmm. um, the other fair programs that we have are just for rental properties. So that should open it up a little bit more. That's good. Okay, uh, I believe we've covered that. So one of the both thanks, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoda. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. We'll move to item 10, and it's another subrecipient agreement. Would you uh, read that in short form, please, Mrs. Frank? Resolution to approve a second amendment to the 2015 subrecipient monitoring agreement between the County of Lycoming and the City of Williamsport. Is there a motion and a second? So move. Second. There's a motion and a second. Mrs. Young, welcome again. Yes, uh, this is a similar resolution. Um, it extends the agreement with the county for the 2015 fair funds until June 30, 2021. Uh, the city was awarded $200,000 under this agreement for the rental property rehab program in the Brodart neighborhood. To date, we've rehabilitated five rental properties that contain a total of 16 rental units and renovations at one additional site are under contract. Contract has a balance of approximately $110,000 and by approving this extension, it will allow us to accept additional applications and expend the remaining funds for new projects. The extension of the agreement to June 30, 2021 is the only change to the original agreement. And this was also reviewed by the Finance Committee. Thank you, Mrs. Young. Um, was reviewed in finance. Are there comments from anyone on finance? <laughs> we forwarded this with a positive recommendation, Randy. Okay, thank you. And it seems similar to the other one. Um, does anybody have any comments? Mr. Banks. Uh, once again, this is more of a educate Councilman Banks situation. Um, so how long can these be extended for? Is it a year by year? Or is there a, a cap on when we can stop extending these in case there are not applicants we want to keep pursuing applicants? Uh, that's up to the county. Uh, every year when the contracts about to expire, we get notified by the county and they extend it out by one year. How long we can do that, I don't know. Um, it is, I mean, these were 2015 funds that we probably didn't actually receive till 2017. By the time, 
by the time the fair agreement is executed with the county and by the time we actually execute an agreement with the county, there's quite a bit of lag time there. So we probably didn't really access these funds until about 2017. Thank you. Other questions or comments? I see you hear none, so we'll have the vote, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Poliz. Yes. Mrs. K yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. M yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. And thank you, Mrs. Young. Thank you. We will move on to item 11, uh, resolution designation of the agent resolution. Um, would you read that in short form, please, Mrs. Frank? Resolution designation of agent resolutions for DR-4506-COVID-19. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Is there a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Second. Motion and second. Thank you. Uh, Chief Killian, welcome to today. Hello. Uh, good evening, uh, President Allison, members of council and administration. Uh, resolution before you, uh, essentially in, in short form here, is um, allowing uh, Mayor Slaughter to designate uh, myself as Fire Chief and Emergency Management Coordinator um, the designation of agent for the Pima and FEMA grant process, um, reimbursement process regarding the, the COVID-19 funding. Um, we've been working with uh, all city departments in finance in establishing our, our um, expenses throughout the pandemic associated with uh, primarily personal protective equipment for our personnel and some, some overtime expenditures. Um, but as this, uh, as this process continues, there's a variety of paperwork and and forms and applications that need to be completed through uh, both Pima and FEMA. Um, and this, uh, this resolution is a requirement to allow me to, to continue on with that process. Uh, this was reviewed in public safety committee also. Chief Killian. Uh, Councilwoman Kent. Yes, we did review this at public safety and this was passed on with a positive recommendation. Um, this is something that um, we know has to be, you know, it's amazing what all we have to do because of this virus. And uh, I'm so happy to know that our, our fire department, our police department codes, everybody is up to stuff with, with taking care of everything that has to be done with this. Um, I have no, we had, I don't think we really even had a discussion about this because we knew where this was going, but like I said, this was passed on with a positive recommendation. Thank you, Mrs. Katz. Other comments or questions from public safety or anyone tonight? Mr. Banks. Um, just to back up what Councilwoman Katz said, um, that goes for everyone in the administration. Um, they've really stepped up, you know, and this, this, this is unprecedented what we're dealing with and, you know, they've been really on top of everything, so. Just a thank you should go out to the administration in general. Um, they've done a great job. I second that. I think we all do. We appreciate the diligence and uh, involvement and uh, detail that they're digging into all the time. Um, we'll have the vote then, please, Mrs. Frank. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Pitt. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Mealy. Yes. Mr. Allen. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. We will move on to item 12. Resolution uh, authorizing accreditation process. Would you please read that in short form, Mrs. Frank? 
Resolution authorizing CFAI accreditation process for the Bureau of Fire. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Is there a motion and a second on this? So moved. There's a motion and a second. Chief Killian again. Hey, thank you, President Allison. Uh, and again, uh, before you, you see a resolution um, uh, regarding the Bureau of Fire's wish to, uh, to enter the CFAI, which is the Commission on Fire Accreditation International Accreditation Process as a registered agency. Um, what this uh, resolution would allow is for the department to enter the, um, the accreditation process, which is currently the only accreditation process um, that, that is offered internationally for fire departments. Um, the, the process is, uh, would take a significant amount of time um, and energy from the fire department standpoint, uh, but really, uh, as police have done over the last several months, you know, in, in beginning their process, um, really allow us to perform uh, a, a good self-assessment of the way we operate um, from everything down to our administration, down to our, our line level firefighters, um, compare us to other agencies internationally, and, uh, you know, upon conclusion of the process, have a peer review done by, um, by the CFAI board. Uh, just kind of, uh, I, I tried to attach a pretty lengthy uh, um, description of the process and the benefits for us, um, but I, I want to particularly note that there's currently only three accredited agencies in the state of Pennsylvania from a fire department standpoint, and there's three more agencies that are that are registered and in the process, and none of those are third class cities. So we'd be the only uh, third class city fire department in the state to be in the process. Um, and moving through the process. And I, I really think it, it's, um, it's a great opportunity for us as a Bureau of Fire and really public safety together with the police department for us both to be moving through, uh, through these processes together. And you know, again, I wanna stress the word process because this is not so much as an end result on a piece of paper on the wall saying we're accredited, but it's the, it's the self-assessment process that allows us to undertake um, to really, you know, dig deep into the way our department operates, the way it has operated in the past, and specifically, um, you know, what what we want to do to set a vision and a course for the future to provide the best service to, to our citizens that we possibly can. So uh, I'm very uh, excited about this opportunity and, uh, and um, you know, looking forward to uh, a recommendation by council. Thank you, and this was, again, also reviewed by Public Safety Committee and Finance. Thank you, Chief Kelly. Um, Public safety, uh, Councilwoman Katz. Yes, this was um, presented at public safety and we did pass this on with a positive recommendation. Um, we just find this really incredible that you're going for an accreditation, uh, really pleased and excited about it. Um, this, one of the things that we did learn, Chief, is that you said it's gonna take probably about five years for this to be completed. It's an ongoing process. It's a journey, not something that's gonna come right away. Um, but when you look at all the bullet points of everything that they have to accomplish, um, our fire our fire department is as wonderful as it is, but this is gonna be even make them more uh, incredible. Um, and I think it's gonna be wonderful since uh, the police department is also going for an accreditation to have two of our safety departments accredited would say a lot for our city. So I think we're, we're really all pleased with the direction that both these departments are going in. And thank you very much, uh, Chief Killian, because this is a, an, another step forward in making our city great. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Um, uh Was also reviewed in finance? This, this was reviewed in finance and also forwarded with a positive recommendation to the full body of council. The, uh, the, item under um it, really this this item and the next item go hand in hand mm -hmm. but um we we thought that in much the same way that we fully supported the police when they um, began the accreditation process earlier this year i think in uh in february um but chief i can, can correct me if i'm wrong um it, that that process seems to be going well uh, smoothly so far for the police department and, and we received um it received also the seal of approval of, of our it department um so we thought that uh, that this too, that clearly accreditation strengthens strengthens our departments and helps us document their strengths. 
um, and uh, and of course, um, as we move into uh, uh, both a political and economic climate where we hope to achieve some regionalization, um, it, it only strengthens our position to to help um, to help with that regionalization. As I said, it was forwarded from the full body or from the finance committee with a positive recommendation. Thank you, Ms. Neely. Other comments from council tonight? Um, I, I agree with everyone else. This is a very admirable goal to go after and, and make us help us be uh, um, stand out. And we already are in practice, but it affirms that. So we thank, thank both the chiefs tonight for taking these initiatives. Um, no other comments? We'll have the vote then, Mrs. Frank. Ms. Frank lost connection. Oh, okay. Norm's going to do the vote. All right. Mr. Lubin? Okay. Yeah, this is going back on what it looks like. Yeah. I'm back. Are you ready? Oh, she's back. We're ready for the vote, Janice. She thinks she's back. <laughs> Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Peliz. Yes. Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Beck. Yes. Ms. Yes. Ms. Yes. Mr. Al. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. We will move to item 13, another resolution for the fire department. Would you read it, read it in short form, please, Mrs. Frank? Resolution authorizing an agreement between the City of Williamsport, Bureau of Fire, and Power DMS for a software system. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Is there a motion and a second tonight? So moved. Second. Second. There it is. Chief Killian. Hey, uh, good evening again. Thank you, President Allison. So uh, before you use a resolution regarding uh, an agreement with Power DMS, um, Power DMS, as you're probably aware, is a, a software system that the police department um, started employing here in February of this year. And uh, the, the interesting part of this is really prior to our, our discussion on accreditation, this system was on our radar simply because of the amount of paperwork uh, that are that us in the Bureau of Fire we disseminate on a regular basis and oftentimes the speed at which the information that we put out to our personnel changes um, and this was particularly evident with the the COVID pandemic as early on into into the, the pandemic we were we were changing operational orders and and putting information out really on an hourly basis um, so what uh, and all of that information I should know needs to come out on on hard copy paper form and to all of our personnel, so they're they're up to speed on what's going on. So, what uh, what Power DMS allows us to do is really make kind of the final transition into the the electronic world and wirelessly, or excuse me, digitally, uh, you know, transmit our communications amongst our people, um, so they can you know they can be inform informed uh, up to speed pretty quickly. Um, much like the police department also, it allows us to manage our accreditation process. Um, it also provides us some training tools for our current, uh, you know, that our current programs don't. Uh, we have uh, multiple systems in place uh, for training on a monthly basis that can all be, again, that are paper now, that can all be transitioned into Power DMS. And really, the I, I think that the best sell for all of us is it allows our public safety agencies um, specifically right now, police and fire, but ideally, you know, branching out uh, amongst the rest of the city to, uh, you know, spread information amongst each other, um, you know, for updated policies and procedures and, you know, documentation, and, and that really increases our efficiency overall. Again, the end goal here is to, uh, to eliminate some paper, increase efficiency within the department, um, get good information to our people in a, in a timely manner, and then ensure, you know, all of our personnel are up to speed. Um, there, it's a web-based system. Uh, there's also an app for it. So, you know, as, as policies are put out, 
as things are updated, you know, they're going instantaneously to, to our personnel's phones if they have the app. Um, you know, and this will be you know, part of a three-part system really that we use from a software standpoint, um, fire department wise, with our emergency reporting software for our incident reports, um, the IM responding software we use for our, our um, you know, on-scene response and operations, and then uh, this Power DMS software for our um, day-to-day -day communications and document management. Uh, and again, this was reviewed in public safety and finance. Thank you, T. Um, let's go to finance first on this one. Uh, sure. This item was reviewed by the finance committee and forwarded to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Um, as Mr. Killian noted, this is uh, a contract that beginning next February will piggyback off the um, police contract for power DMS um, and uh, add about $2,000 annually to the cost of the power DMS contract so far. Um, however, as I said, as I mentioned with the previous item, um, the police have, have had thus far a very positive experience with power DMS. It also got high marks from uh, Chris Cooley in the IT department. Uh, and generally speaking, um, it, it seems like something that that will be that will have a utility not only for police and fire, but but throughout the city's um, potentially throughout the city. Uh, and uh, so I think it's good that the that the police sort of started off with this. A few months to vet it is not a terrifically long time, um, but I think from here we can see how it works for police and fire. And then ideally, um, if it if it seems like something that would be successful for the rest of the city as well, move move in that direction. Um, as I said, uh, the, the cost of this contract, um, the sort of training portion of the contract running through next February is about $2,400, uh, I believe, Mr. Killian. And, um, and then it will continue to add about $2,400 annually to the cost of, of um, the software for the city uh, moving forward beginning next, next February. Thank you, Ms. Mealy. Uh, comments or questions from finance committee and others. And it was reviewed in public safety. Do you have anything to add, Mrs. Katz? Yes, this was passed off with a positive recommendation also. And to be noted that a thousand dollars of this will go into training for the first is that's just for the first year, right, Chief? Uh, yeah, that's actually just uh, initial training and setting up the system because what one of the things we have to do is because the police department is on a standalone system now, um, the, the the company has to come in and essentially make the, it, you function with these on a dashboard. So they need to make the initial dashboard and then allow you know, separate sections for police and fire that are both security protected. And we want to make sure the police, uh, the police files, you know, and our files are protected. So it's it's setting that, that system up and it's also um, training us and then a system administrator who would probably be uh, Chris Cooley from IT, you know, for total system access. Fantastic. This is, this is something that we've wanted to see in the city for years. We wanted everybody to be under one umbrella. So everybody is on the same page with everything that's going on. So to see this being started first with the police department and now with the fire department, um, and excited to know that um, it's going to be working through for the rest of the city, be it codes and whoever else is needed in this. So um, good job, guys. Good job. Thank you very much. And again, passed on to the full body of council with a positive recommendation. Thank you, Mrs. Katz. Are there any further comments? Mr. Banks. Well, I'll just to add on to what Bonnie said again. Um, you know, this is part of a, a broader effort to uh, to go paperless in the city. I mean, it's going to take us some time. COVID has kind of pushed us in a situation where we need to do that more and more. So if we can continue that going forward, if there's any programs like this where we can expand these types of programs, it's to our benefit. It behooves us to do so. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Um, I think that's all. So we'll take the vote on that, please, Mrs. Frank. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. Yes. 
Mrs. Cat. Yes. Mr. Bank. Yes. Ms. B. Yes. Mr. Alice. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Um, we will move to the remainder of the agenda, item 14, except for filing finance committee meetings of February 18, 2020, public safety meeting minutes of March 3rd, 2020, and public work meeting minutes of March 3rd, 2020. Is there a motion and a second on those minutes? So moved. Second. Comments, questions, corrections? Hearing them, we'll have the vote, Mr. Frank. Mr. Yoder. Yes. Mr. Mackey. Yes. Mr. Polizzi. Yes. Mrs. Katz. Yes. Mr. Banks. Yes. Ms. Miller. Yes. Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Mrs. Frank. Move to announcements. The next regularly scheduled city council meeting will be held Thursday, May 28, 2020, at 6.30 p.m., also uh, remotely. Upcoming meetings, Tuesday, May 19, 10 a.m., Blighted Property, 11 a.m., Historic Preservation, 6.30 p.m., HARB. Thursday, May 21, 10.30 a.m., Zoning Hearing Board, 4 p.m., Board of Health, then Friday, May 22nd, 11 a.m., possibly an ERC meeting. Can you confirm that, Ms. Mealy, or is that to be decided later? I um, haven't had any specific requests that I'm aware of okay. for the agenda, although uh, it's possible Ms. Ms. Frank has heard something that I haven't. Um, in the, I suppose the, the best thing to say is if anyone um, has any items for ERC, we would appreciate uh, um being informed of those items sooner rather than later <laughs> uh mr allison if i might make a quick correction yes you can uh, the historic preservation committee meeting uh would actually is actually slated for tuesday may 26th at 11 a.m okay. um as we can see it will conflict with public safety if there is a public safety meeting in which case it would uh we would simply meet in the in the secular room session room okay. if, if we had uh a request for if we have an agenda for that committee okay yes thank you mm -hmm. so tuesday may 26th at 11 30 a.m there is a public safety meeting um where, uh, Tuesday, May 26 at 1 p.m. finance meeting. And I lost a date here, 12 p.m. planning commission. Oh, is that correct? That was scheduled for Monday Memorial Day, so they changed oh, okay. Tuesday. Okay, so there'll be a planning commission meeting at 12 p.m. and then a finance meeting at 1 p.m. 2.30 p.m. public works meeting, 7 p.m. citizen core. Wednesday, May 27th, 11.30 a.m. redevelopment authority. Thursday, May 28th is our council meeting. Um, are there any comments from council tonight? I just, uh, just one thing I wanted to comment on um, and we're all dealing in uh, everyone's watching the numbers for our county and um, in our area and, and we are getting a little bit of a breakdown um, from the we're getting a good breakdown now from the county coroner who's keeping good track of things and as of yesterday there were 24 confirmed cases in the city now that doesn't there's no the, the state isn't tracking recovery so there's no way to push that thing no so there's no way to um, to uh, apply that data. So, so a lot of those are probably recovered. Um, that doesn't mean there aren't 
asymptomatic people walking around and people that do have it that aren't tested, but it just puts it into some perspective. But I just um, wanted to, uh, and I think all of council would want to extend our um, heartfelt sympathy towards um, our neighbors in Jersey Shore and uh, the, the outbreak they've had there in the uh, nursing home and and so forth. And uh, it's just one of those tragedies that's a, uh, a result of this virus and, and how it acts. And, uh, and, you know, we want to support them in any way we can. And we certainly uh, want to add our voice to encourage the state, um, if they can hear us, uh, to, to really focus on, on that community and that nursing home and to help them through this uh, this trying time, and we support all those who who are working to do that uh, and get them through this crisis. Um, Mr. Yoder. Yeah, thanks, President Allison. Just to kind of add on to that, you know, we're in the process of reopening, um, and I know there's been a lot of back and forth and chatter about um, how it's being done and what have you. Um, I would. I think we all can agree and understand the level of necessity of getting to that point um, economically and fiscally. I would just, for anybody watching, I would just encourage everybody to take this very seriously. Um, make sure that you're not only protecting yourself, but each other in doing that and, and be, be as responsible as we can. Um, you know, we, we've, we've invested a lot thus far in the response. Um, to combating this um, economically specifically. And I think if we can be responsible, which I trust that we can be, um, we, we will not um, waste the investment that's been made thus far and can um, push forward faster um, by being cautious and being safe and being responsible. So we just encourage everybody to um, do so as we slowly open up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yoder. Other comments or questions from council tonight? Uh, anything from the administration tonight? Okay, thank you. Hearing none, um, we'll move to public comments. Mr. Lubin, do we have any? Yes, uh, there are, I think, four of them. The first two comments um, are identical. Uh, one came from a Misty. Dion, D-I-O-N, and the other one from Shailen, uh, and I'm not sure how to pronounce the last name, S-L-U-Z-A-L-I-S, -L and their, their comments are identical. And comments are, while the Department of Justice continues their investigation and our attorneys continue to offer negotiations, we demand city council takes action on their longstanding commitment to make city hall accessible. We entered into structured negotiations on March 5th and submitted a draft settlement agreement March 28th, 2020. It has been over a month and we still have not received a response from City Council. Instead, City Council has developed an ad hoc committee tasked with making a timely recommendation on whether to stay or move to a different or new facility. However, this topic has been rehashed for years and City slash county officials have determined not to relocate in a 20, July 2017 memo authored by Penn Strategies and based on Anthony Visco Architects report, Facility Needs Assessment. Has this new committee reviewed this needs assessment report? Does the city plan to sell or demo City Hall? Unless City Hall is demolished, a very expensive project, the building must still comply with the ADA. Nothing about ADA compliance is saved by relocating city services. Almost three years after we started these negotiations and more than $150,000, nearly the cost of the ramp wasted on bids, and we are still waiting for an accessible and ADA compliant building. City Hall continues to, City Council continues to stall. At this point, we seriously question whether continued negotiations, which have produced no outcomes thus far, is a good use of our attorney's efforts. And that's the first two that we have. 
Thank you, Mr. Lubin. The next one is from uh, Brittany, S-L-U-Z-A-L-I-S. Um, and it says, my name is Brittany and I am a disabled resident of Williamsport who uses a wheelchair. I have been demanding alongside my fellow activists with North Central PA ADAPT, advocates with Road to Freedom Center for Independent Living and other disabled residents of Williamsport since 2017, that Williamsport City Council make City Hall accessible for people like me and for all. Almost three years after we started the discussions and more than $150,000, nearly the cost of the ramp, wasted on bids, and we are still waiting for an accessible and ADA compliant building. City Council continues to stall. At this point, I seriously wonder if our City Council cares about people like me and whether continued negotiations with which have produced no outcomes thus far is a good use of our attorney's efforts. Stop stalling, stop backpedaling, begin construction on City Hall's ramp and elevator now approve our negotiation settlement. 30 years of the ADA, we've waited long enough. And the final one is from Jody Benet, B-A-N-E-Y. And her comment is uh, president of, of the council. When, when will the city make city hall accessible? The ramp and elevator need fixed immediately so all can have access to city hall. When will the city be approving negotiation agreement? Isn't 30 years enough time waiting for accessibility? City Hall for all. And that's the final uh, uh, one that we, oh wait, I'm sorry, there's, there's another one uh, from a Jay Harner, H-A-R-N-A-N-E-R. And he resides at 4350 Blooming Grove Road, Williamsport, PA. Uh, president of city, president of council. Why is it that after three years of developing, investigating, researching, and accepting bids that cost the city more than $150,000, why has there still been no progress yet on a new ramp for access to City Hall? And that's the end of the uh, emails that have been received. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lubin. Uh, we'll take that all under advisement. Um, other uh, I guess that brings us to the end. Uh, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I will make an announcement that we are having an executive session this evening. So good night, everyone. And I'll see the rest of the council in a few minutes.